let's get into this right off the top. I, I'm, 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 I'm furious about this situation. And it's not just the shooting. It's not just the shooting. Mind you, this stuff happens. It's not just the shooting. It's the way the community reacts. It's the way the police chief reacts. It, it, it makes my blood boil. First and foremost, they don't put out all the information and get ahead of this incident. It, it, I don't understand. In 2019, why officers don't get ahead, why, why police chiefs don't get ahead of an incident like this. There is no reason in the world to release body-worn camera if you're not going to come out and make a statement. And you're just going to let the public come up with ideas. Ferguson was a perfect example. They came out with the narrative, hands up, don't shoot. Never happened. Then the police department put a half hazard body worn camera out with, with a picture of guns in the room. If it doesn't apply, then why are you putting it out to the media so they can create a frenzy? So you can throw this officer under the bus? I mean, what, what is your what is your motives? And then let's move to the community because I'm going to get into the shooting in a minute. Let's talk about the community. I haven't seen a single one of them MFs marching on the street, got hatchets, no justice, no peace. When people in the community doing the same thing, killing people in the community, you ain't done nothing but sit on your hands because you're a coward. And all that talking about community, this community, that, put a uniform on and serve your own community. And you won't do it because you're a coward. I'm sick of these people. Keep that same energy when, when somebody's selling dope in the community, when somebody killing another person in the community with gang violence. Not too long ago, they had a 10 people shot, three people murdered in a gang retaliation incident. And a young woman like A. Tatiana, she was promising, had a future, wasn't doing nothing, got killed. And not one pastor, not nobody in the community came out and marched. No justice, no peace. Not one of them. Not one of you suckers. Then the police department. Listen, I don't know who this officer's field trainer was. But these are the things you cannot do as an officer. I don't understand. Now, this is what I will say, because I don't want to talk too much about the police officer's dealings. And we don't have all the information because they won't tell the truth about what's happening. Because if an officer decided to not announce himself and their motives was to check welfare and you don't knock on the front door. You don't say, hey, it's the, it's the Fort Worth Police Department. You are a piece of crap. You shouldn't have a badge. You shouldn't have a gun. You should be sitting at home. You have an obligation to protect and serve. You're supposed to be tactically sound. It's, it's no reason in the world that you should make a, a, a mistake like this. They will rail you in the academy about not effing up and shooting somebody that you shouldn't shoot because now you got everybody looking bad. What is your tactics? You don't walk in front of a window. You don't walk in front of a window because if somebody's in the window, they're going to shoot and kill you. What is your tactics? I don't, you shouldn't be at home playing video games, thinking you're cool. At the club, your pro focus and priority as a police officer, as a young, new officer, is for you to know what the heck you're doing. You should know what you're doing. You should run these scenarios in your mind so you don't kill people that you shouldn't kill. Now, I'll say this. that He resigned. They said he's not cooperating with the police department. There's two things that come to my mind. One, he's a piece of crap. Two, the police department is trying to throw him under the bus. And he said, and he said, F you. F y'all. Because I'm going to tell you this. That woman better not have had a gun in her hand. She better not have had a gun in her hand and pointed it at this officer. That, that can't be the truth. That can't be what happened. No way. There's no way she pointed a gun at him and they charged him with murder. There's no way. It better not be the case. I better not wake up in the morning 
and hear that the lady actually pointed a gun at this officer. I better not hear. I'm telling you right now, I better not hear that BS in the morning or I'm going to lose my wig. I better hear that the lady was innocent. She was sitting. I mean, she was innocent to start with. I'm saying she was innocently sitting there and she happened to look out the window and get shot. That better be what happened. And that officer better be charged, which he is. He better be convicted. And you can pay the family out for a wrongful death. Anything other than that, I'm going to be livid. Because there is a tradition in America today of throwing police officers under the bus. They will F you with no, with no permission. They, they don't care about you. They throw you under the bus and they back over you. For the police chief of Fort Worth, the interim chief, you spineless POS. I'm going after everybody tonight. You spineless POS. You get up there and say, well, I understand why the department don't have, why people, the community don't have trust. What are you talking about? The community don't have trust. When 99.9% .9 of the police interactions with the community are positive. One off, once a year, once every two years, and you want to say you understand why the community don't support the police department and have issues with the police department. Who do you think was protecting and serving every day? The same people that's out there protesting. It don't make me get mad. Y'all going to make me lose myself. I'm going to lose my salvation because y'all... I'm, it's not okay. It is not okay for police chiefs to be cowards. Easy to sit behind the badge and point the finger because that's what everybody want to hear you say. That police chief should have came out and said, I understand that the community is upset about this incident. Not with the integrity of the Fort Worth Police Department. Because 99.9% .9 of the time, when we go to calls, we do them with respect, we do them with integrity, and we have elite training. This officer did not follow training. He didn't do what he's supposed to do. He effed up. We're going to hold him accountable. But our department is sound. We hold people accountable. And we're the greatest police department in Texas. And if the community have an issue with one officer, we understand. But to not have trust in a complete police department that's doing investigations on rape, domestic violence, uh, uh, pedophilia, all these different things that the police department do investigations on on a day-to-day -day basis to put your, the people that fend you behind bars. All the training we do, all the money we spend, all the officers that have died in the line of duty and you don't respect the police department, you got you kiss my behind. One case, I understand. One situation, I understand. This has nothing to do with Amber Geiger. This has nothing to do with Michael Brown. This is our department, and it's what we need to address, period. That's what a police chief with a backbone should be saying. Not walking around with his head between his legs with, with white guilt. I, I know what it, I understand. I understand. You just saying what you want them, to, what, what you want, what they want to hear. You don't mean it. You don't care. I'm, I'm losing it. I'm about to lose my mind on these people. Let me get to a few super chats because I'm, 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 I'm infuriated by some of this stuff I see. Oh, it's definitely the good old boys club. Let's see. Love, 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 more love. Thanks, uh, champ. Truth, truth, more truth. I appreciate it, Brandon Raymond, for the super chat. Let's see. Officer Lou. 17 people killed in Baltimore over the weekend, including a two-year-old. Where's the energy? Exactly. Shake my head. It's infuriating. I, I swear to God, y'all, God is my witness as sure as I'm on this live stream. I'm sick and tired of these fake activists. I, I can't stand y'all. Y'all are the POSs of the community. You ain't no better than an officer shooting somebody unjustly. You ain't no better. Y'all, y'all, y'all are failing us. Our leadership is failing us because you only get pub, you only get GoFundMe, you only get love from the community leaders when you're killed by a police officer. But when Ray Ray run by and shoot the whole house up and, and your kid get hit in the head, 
They ain't even coming on the news to talk about your kid. They ain't putting on a shirt. They're not talking on the news. They're not running through the streets with hatchets, protesting, no justice, no peace. These MFers are literally walking by every drug dealer in the community as they protest this police incident. They walk by every person in the community that's abusing their kids and doing all this BS as they protest the police department. I lived, I grew up in Fort Worth. I remember several people getting justifiably shot. They are here protesting, walking past the drug dealers, walking past the prostitutes and pimps. They walking past the gang members to protest a justified incident. And you think that the public's supposed to be, how you think we're going to grow? And for all you people out here talking about Brandon don't never, he don't never, he always talking about black people. We are the only community that does this. It, I feel like when the white person get killed unjustly, they, they let the court do its course. And if the person get off, they go through the proper channels. The person, nine times out of 10, an officer kills somebody they shouldn't, they get charged. Nine times out of 10. Just because you don't have any awareness and you don't know the law, don't mean that the officer was unjust or, or let off and no justice was served because you don't know the law. I'm telling y'all right now, I don't care what the circumstance is. If she put a gun on that officer in the window, this you can forget about him getting charged with anything or convicted. He could be charged but convicted. How do I send money through PayPal? Um, I got a PayPal link if you want to. I appreciate it. Excitable 101, thanks so much for modding the, the show tonight. I'm just saying, man, I, 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 we, we, we give too much attention to this stuff. We give too much of our heart and energy to this stuff. When this happens once every blue moon, where an officer, I'm talking about, listen, go city by city. I'm not talking about nationwide. I'm city by city. How many times have an officer unjustly shot a person in Fort Worth, Texas? I, I could go look it up right now. In the last year, this is probably the only unjustified shooting in, the, in this year, if it is determined to be unjustified. This will be the only one this year. And, and I, I, I could tell you three people that got murdered in gang violence just not too long ago because I put the article in my last video. Oh, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. They sit up here and they cry and they bicker and they do all this stuff, but they don't really care about the community. They just talking. The police chief, the police department want to play politics and want to play political correctness. They throw their officers under the bus and they don't address the public. The interim police chief, bro, just like Jerry Williams out here in Phoenix, cowards. They want to tell the public what they want to hear. Oh, this is this is terrible. This is the worst thing I ever heard. Our officers need new training. This is not a reflection of our police department. We need it. No, no, it's not. No, no, hold on, hold on. You telling me somebody robbing a store, taking police on a hospital chase, and an officer gets upset. Now the whole now, now this is all wrong. No, no, no. What about what they did? This is the thing that kills me about police. Let's go into who the brother wanted to set free. To set free. To walk amongst us. Because we won't even get into the judge. People talking about how beautiful, how beautiful it was for him hugging her. Oh, it was so beautiful. Look at this. Look at this. You're actually right, Lucas. Even Almighty God himself, who, who forgives all the time, never leaves sins unpaid for. So much for that. Pay our debts. Debts always have to be paid for accordingly. Here's, here's Think about this case. This case is a massive injustice. Everyone has simplified a man's life has simplified a man's life, an innocent life, to one little moment of his brother hugging the murderer. I don't think it's same for everyone, hence the problem. That's what everyone has boiled this down. Everyone's, no one's talking about the injustice that, that was seen before us. No one's talking about the injustice. Everyone's talking about this beautiful hug. Think about the president this judge set. Nobody wants to talk about that. She just let the victim hug the murderer. You ready for something? You ready? Are you ready? What happened if the brother was faking it? What happened is, can I just please hug her? Can I please? He goes up to hug her and he had a weapon on him. Check, 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 check. 
They ignored one of the witnesses. She recorded Amber after shooting. She heard Amber say, let me in, let me in. She heard Jean's last words. Why'd you do that? We won't even go into that. We're not even ready for that yet. What happened if the brother punched this woman? She just allowed a victim to go hug the murderer because he asked. How many, how many videos have you seen of someone just waiting Waiting for the right moment to get their hands on the person who killed one of their family members or their friends. Just waiting, jumping over, jumping over the courtroom to, to, to get their hands on the person who took one of their family members' life. This judge just allowed this man to step down from the stand and have physical interaction with the murderer. What happened if that it went south? On top of that. The judge herself stepped down from the stand and hugged a convicted murderer. Hugged a convicted murderer. Name me one other time you've seen that. Did OJ get hugged? Did he? Did Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, did any of them get hugged? Bailiff combing her hair, stroking her hair. This was a circus. That's what this was. This was a clown circus. There was no justice served here. None. None. But let's go into Amber Geiger. You ready? Let's go into Amber Geiger. Let's set up Amber Geiger because we're going to look into the character of Amber Geiger. Are you ready? Let's, let's do this. Let's look at some of the text messages that Amber Geiger was doing. Are you ready? Because we all know, for those of you who have jobs, for those of you who have jobs, especially high paying jobs, what do they want? They want to know your social media handles, right? They want to know your social media handles. What social media you have, what you've done. Mm-hmm. And you have to hand that over. Let's look at some of the social, let's look at some of the posts from Amber Geiger. Are you ready? Let's check this out. Let's see. Let's see. See if she had been um, your racism is showing. Block that person. Whoever said that. I don't know. Uh, father, I don't know who that is. F fate taker. Block. Can, can someone block him? Uh, one of the mods. If not, I can do it myself. Let me just scroll up. And boom. Here we go. There we go. Bye bye. That's how that works. Don't tell me about. My racism is showing. I didn't bring race into this. I didn't say anything about her being white. That's not my argument. My argument is she should have never been an officer to begin with. Never been an officer to begin with. Let's look. Let's look at some of the social media posts. Are you ready? This is one of the social media posts. Let's see if we can scale this up so everyone can see this. Oh my God. Oh, too much. Here we go. I wear all black to remind you not to mess with me because I'm already dressed for your funeral. I wear all black to remind you not to mess with me because I'm already dressed for your funeral. I would argue I don't want anyone in the police who is having that on their Pinterest. I don't want anyone who is liking that, sharing that, at all. Mm-mm. Nope. And underneath it, you want to know what she said underneath it? Yeah, I got me a gun and shovel and gloves. If you were back, if you, if you back the F up and get out of my effing ass. Please discuss the murder of the key witness, Joshua B uh, Brown. I don't buy for a moment that this murder was unrelated to Mr. Gene's trial. Let's go. On, we're, we're still on Amber Geiger. This is an officer. This is, I want people to understand, this is an officer, okay? An officer who's policing us. I wear all black to remind you not to mess with me because I'm already dressed for your funeral. Okay, let's continue on. This is another, another post. Stay low, go fast, kill first, die last. One shot, one kill, no luck, all skill. Amber saved, quotes, 
and inspiration. Saved it to quotes and inspiration. Navy SEALs. Does this sound like someone who should have a badge? Does this sound like someone who should have a badge? Let's go on. You ready? Let's go on because there's more. There's more. Let's go on to some of her texts. You ready? Here we go. Martin Riviera. Martin Riviera was her partner. Martin Riviera was a married man. She was sleeping with Martin Riviera. This is Amber Geiger. This is the person who the victim's brother wanted to set free. This is the person. I'd argue she shouldn't have never even been an officer. Joshua Brown, a key witness. I saw. I saw. Damn, I was at this area with five different black officers. Exclamation mark. Not racist, but damn. Not racist, but just have a different way of working and it shows. Okay. All right. Maybe they were doing some, some clownish behavior. Maybe they were doing some clownish behavior. But I would argue if they were doing stuff that it was inappropriate, why wouldn't you correct them? Why wouldn't you notify the person in charge, yo, these officers are out of line? Instead, she chooses to, to text the married man who she's sleeping with. This is the character of the person who's an officer. This is the character of the person who has that badge on. People conflate the badge with being a hero. No. Mm-mm. Don't conflate just because you see a badge does not mean that person is automatically a hero. There are a lot of chumps and clowns and cowards that are that that have badges. Not all. Let me repeat that again. Not all, but there are definitely some rotten apples. Just like you probably have some rotten apples, rotten apples in your family. Just like there's some rotten apples, rotten rotten attorneys. Just like there's some rotten uh, construction workers, com some contractors. Some rotten politicians. Just because they have an R behind their name doesn't mean they're actually a Republican. Don't be confused by the aesthetics. Don't be confused by the aesthetics. And sure as hell, don't be confused by the crocodile tears. Let's look into this. That's what she said. There's another one. You ready? Do you know what you need? A German Shepherd. I happen to have one for you. She's not very smart, but she'll love you. Lol, is it your dog? No, no, it's your dog. Although she may be racist. I wish I could have one, but not in this apartment smaller than my old one. Amber Geiger replies, it's okay, I'm the same. L-M-A-O, I hate everything and everyone but y'all. Does that sound like someone you want with a badge? The le person just said the dog, may the dog may be racist. The dog may be racist. She said, it's okay, I'm the same. Does that sound like someone you want with a badge? Policing you? Huh? This is the character. We're building up the character of Amber Geiger. Does that sound like someone you would want in a uniform policing you? Not to me. Not to me. Are you ready? It gets better. It gets better. Let's, let's bring up some other stuff about Amber Geiger. Because Amber Geiger... Are you ready for this one? I don't think some of you guys are ready for this one. I agree, Lucas. I live in Dallas. Okay, I hear you. Um, you ready? Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. This is it. This is it right here. You ready? This is it. Let's bring up some other information about Amber Geiger. After the verdict, Geiger's former supervisor... Let's see it so you guys can see this. Dallas Police Sergeant Robert Watson also recounted filing an internal affairs referral after the officer allowed a handcuffed prisoner to escape her custody. 
a handcuffed prisoner to escape her custody. Does that sound like a competent officer to you? I'm just wondering, does that sound like a competent officer to you? But it gets better. You ready? Not only did she allow this prisoner to escape her custody, she did not immediately report the full details of the incident, he said. But during cross-examination, Watson told the court he thought Geiger had been a dependable, hard-working officer. Does that sound like cover-up to you? Does that sound like cover-up to you? He admitted that she allowed, she, she was so incompetent, a handcuffed prisoner to escape her custody. Not only did she allow a handcuffed prisoner to escape her custody, she didn't even fully, she didn't even immediately report the full details. That means she admitted certain key factors. Does that sound like an officer, does that sound like an officer you trust? Does that sound like someone you would want with a badge? Does that sound like a hero to you? This is the person the victim's brother wanted to set free. I want people to understand this. But during cross-examination, what, what did Dallas Police Sergeant Robert Watson say? He told the court he thought Geiger was, had been dependable and a hard-working officer. That's very conflicting. That's very conflicting. I don't know how a dependable officer lets a handcuffed prisoner escape her custody and then not even immediately report the full details. That doesn't sound dependable to me. Sounds like you were covering up for her. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like there's some rotten apples in the bunch. But let's continue on with the character of Amber Geiger. You ready? Let's go on with the character of Amber Geiger because it gets better. It gets better. Nobody wants to talk about this. Everybody wants to talk about forgiveness and everything. But it's all right. It's all right. Don't worry. Lucas will cover it. Lucas will cover it. On top of that, on top of that, are you ready for this? Where is it? Where is it? Trying to look it up. I'm trying to look it up. Because what Amber Geiger did is that she was also, she she couldn't pass uh, the, she failed, what did she fail? She failed, she failed uh, her, her, the polygraph when it came to marijuana. She failed the polygraph test when it came to admitting marijuana usage. Does that sound like a good officer to you? Does that sound like a good officer to you? Here we go. You ready for this one? Let's look at this one, people. Let's look at this one. No, thanks. No, thank you. Where is it? Let's see if we can find it. Uh, she failed the polygraph test multiple times. Where is it? We're going to look at, sorry, there it is. Let's maximize this so people can see. Yo, I hit you up on IG about this people trying to reason for this woman. How do you feel about OJ case? My brother got 30 years from drug charges. Where is his sympathy or does that not count? Oh, we're going to get into that. We're going to, here it is. Here it is. You ready? There it is. While discussing the content, all these ads, man of Geiger's personnel file outside earshot of the jury, Judge Tammy Kemp disclosed that the files revealed that Geiger had failed multiple polygraph tests while, God dog it, look, they don't even want me to cover it. They don't even want me to cover it. You see how it just magically disappeared? Where is it? God dog. Where is it? Don't worry, I'll find it. God dog it. <laughs> Ooh, devil. Devil is, devil is wrong on this one. There we go. While discussing, I want people to see this. While discussing the content of Geiger's personnel, pro, pro, personnel file outside earshot of the jury, Judge Tammy Kemp disclosed that the files revealed that Geiger had failed multiple polygraph tests while recounting her use of marijuana. 
She said she consumed it three times nearly a decade ago and her theft of a pencil and a brownie prior to her job. She can't even tell the truth about marijuana usage. About marijuana usage. Now, when I had to file out my paperwork to become a sheriff for, 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 for the process, they want they, a list of everything. Everything from steroids to camp to drugs. I even, I even know where drugs. Have you ever done this, this, and this, this, and this, and this, and that, 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 and this, and this, and this? And during your interview, the officer questions you on all of this. This is before you even get to the polygraph. You get an interview with an officer. Cop plus white lady equals immunity from the law. I won't go that far. But let's, this is the character of Amber Geiger. Failed multiple polygraph tests for can't even get her story straight about usage of marijuana. Uses of marijuana. On top of that, let, a, cus let a, a, a handcuffed prisoner go accidentally out of her custody and then immediately come with the full details. Okay? Has racially charged text messages because they're, oh, I don't even think I brought you up the racially charged text message where, she, where they were talking about the MLK march and they ask, when will this end? And she says, when MLK is dead. Oh, wait. There are texts between her and her boy boy talking negatively, negatively about working with fellow black officers too. She just seemed unfit for any kind of service. I already covered that. Now, let's, let's get into the incident. Are you ready? Let's get into the incident of what took place. What they want us to believe is that Amber Geiger parked on the wrong floor, went to the wrong apartment, and put her key in the door, and the door went open. The door was ajar. That's what, the, that's what they say. They say the door was ajar. You put your key in an ajar door, and it opened. Now, let me, I want, I want people to think about this. You come home and the door to your apartment building is open. What do you think you're going to do? What is the first thing you at least are going to do? Hello? Is anyone in there? Hello? Hello? You at least call out. You're like, yo, some, I don't remember leaving the door jar. Left has lost her mind. Huh? Hello? What does she do? She charges in. Now, here's the thing, people. You and me are different. We're civilians. I didn't go to the police academy. I had no formal training. This is an officer of five years. This is an officer of five years. Of five years, people. Five years. What does she do? She charges in and shoots an innocent man who was eating ice cream on his couch. But let's, let's look at what an officer said she should have done. Are you ready? Let's look, because I don't know. I don't know, I could be wrong. But let's look at what an officer said she should have done. Because it's a burglary situation. Because you don't know. You don't know, but let's look at what an officer... That dramatic murder trial underway in you ready? We're now seeing body cam video from the night a police officer killed her neighbor, claiming she mistook his apartment for her own. But prosecutors spent day two of the trial trying to portray Geiger as reckless, pressing one responding officer about the protocol when an officer believes there's a burglary in progress. What do you do? You cover and concealment. Cover and concealment. How many of y'all knew that? How many of you guys knew anything about cover and concealment? I didn't know. I don't know. I would have been like, hello? Is anyone in there? Hello? And I would have slowly opened the door. She's an officer. She, she just getting off. Had her uniform on and everything. She charges into the door. Opens the door. That was ajar. This officer said, shouldn't have even done that. Is that because of the sanctity of human life? Yes, sir. Because of the sanctity of human life. This is another officer. Don't take it from me. Take it from another officer. What protocol is. Let's, let's hear it again. You ready? 
Don was an intruder and opened fire. But prosecutors spent day two of the trial trying to portray Geiger as reckless, pressing one responding officer about the protocol when an officer believes there's a burglary in progress. What do you do? You cover concealment. Is that because of the sanctity of human life? Yes, sir. Did she do that? No. She didn't. Here's the thing. You ready? She says that she told them to let me see your hands. What she says, here's what she says. She says that he charged at her. He says, she, she says that he charged at her at saying, hey, hey, hey. Are you ready for this one? Are you ready for this one? I don't think you guys are. Because what we end up find, finding out, that's not accurate. That's not accurate. You ready for this? Caught in a lie during her testimony. What lie was this, Lucas? It's not about her. It, it certainly ain't about you. Victim's brother chose to forgive the evil. The universe will see in a positive light. Your feelings about this are irrelevant. Um, can someone block this? Block them? Thank you for the super chat, but you're blocked. Because I just told you. This has nothing to do. I'm not talking about forgiveness. It has nothing to do with that. Uh, so can one of the mods block block whoever left that super chat? I don't know who it is. If you guys can't do it, I'll be more than happy to do it. It's simple as that. Um, what the? So let's let's see let's see if we can just block this simpleton. Very simple to block this person. Um. She, she then says, you ready? Let's look at this. Block that clown. Absolutely correct. Whoever, we have mods in here. Can you block that person, please? Simple as that. You ready? Here we go. A prosecutor in the Amber Geiger murder trial claimed, claimed that the defendant, a former Dallas police officer, was caught in a lie during a testimony on Friday. Assistant District Attorney Jason Fine said in closing arguments that Geiger changed her story about fatally shooting neighbor Botham Jean, 26. At first, Geiger said Jean was by the back door and that he was coming at, at her. During redirect, she said that Jean was by the couch. She said, so you guys remember, you guys remember that she said he was going towards her. Hey, 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 hey. And she shot. During redirect, she says Jean was by the couch. She was caught in a lie, said Fine. He persisted that Geiger changed her story after fellow prosecutor Jason Hermas brought up physical evidence that second shot was in the wall over by Jean's couch. So she changed her story when the prosecutor questioned her. When the prosecution questioned her, it's like, yo, it showed that the second shot was in the wall over by Gene's couch. Oh, it, yeah, he was over by the couch. He wasn't, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't by the door, by the back door and coming at her. He was by the couch. This is the type of person that the brother wanted to set free lied under oath are you ready but let's look at the defense you ready let's 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 even look at the defense of the 911 call let's go into the 911 call people i don't think you guys are ready for this i really don't i don't think you guys are ready for this 911 call because the 911 call is very interesting it's very different from the defense she used the defense she used was the defense she was in fear of her life. She was in fear of her life. Right? That's what's the defense, and that's why she shot. She was in fear of her life. <laughs> she was in fear of her life, that's why she shot. This judge allowed castle doctrine to be used. Allowed castle doctrine to be used, which is a tantamount to stand your ground law. In a castle that wasn't even hers. Think about, think about that. 
You're going to try and stand your ground in a ground that's not even yours? That they allowed. Of course, it was thrown out, but they even tried to allow it. They also allowed, the judge allowed, it was a crime of passion. It was a crime of passion because she was in fear. They gave this woman every out they could. They tried to protect, they protected her from the jump. Let's look at the 911 call. You ready? Let's look at the 911 call. Dallas at this hour. A police chief there calls this a very unique case. You ready? Here we go. Officer 911 call after shooting John. I'm an off-duty officer. I thought it was in my apartment. And I shot a guy thinking that he was thinking it was my apartment. Off-duty officer. People try to say she was on duty. She's off duty. She just said she was off duty. Off duty officer, I thought it was my apartment. Let's continue on. And, and that was very difficult for me. Okay, we have help on the way. I know, but I'm, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to lose my job. Where was this remorse? Where was this remorse? It wasn't her boyfriend? No. Riviera was the, was is a married man she was sleeping with. She was having an affair. I know, but I'm going to lose my job. Those are words that came out of her mouth. She had just shot an innocent man and she's thinking about her job. I'm going to lose my job. Don't forget that he had a bright red mat outside his door. How can any sober person disregard that? Well, I believe they tried to say she was drinking or something. She was tired. She was tired. And she says it in the call. Why do you think she said that? What type of tired person sexes your partner? If I'm tired, I'm not going to get any. Trust me, you're not, I'm not going to receive any sex texting. And I'm not going to shoot anything back because I'm tired. I'm not in the mood for some hanky panky. I'm going to bed. First thing I... One of the things, first words out of her mouth, I know, I know, I know there's help on the way, but I'm, I'm going to lose my job. I see why you blocked them. These people are dumb. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Not my followers. There are some trolls, but not my followers. My followers are very smart. They're very keen. Very observant. Very intelligent. I know, but I'm going to lose my job. I know there's help coming to help the, the person I just shot, but I'm going to lose my job. You don't understand. And that's when she snaps into action. Wait, this is going to be recorded. Let me cover myself. I thought it was my apartment. I thought it was my apartment. I thought it was my apartment. In recording, Geiger can be heard growing increasingly distraught. Oh my God, I'm done. Oh my God, I'm done. Not, oh my God, what have I done? Oh my God, I'm done. Oh my God, what have I done? She said, oh my God, what have I done? Oh my God. She said, I know, but I'm going to lose my job. Oh my God, I'm done. Her concern has nothing to do with this man. Nothing. The key witness got shot and killed in the case. I saw. People talking about her, her being remorseful. No remorse. No remorse here. Her concern is with her job. Her concern is with her employment. Oh my God, I'm done. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. Oh my God, but look at the wording. Look at what came first though. Look at what came first. Not, I didn't mean to. Oh my God, I'm going to lose my job. It's, oh my God, I'm going to lose my job. I didn't mean to. Job first, one more second. This is, this is... Ladder. This is after she said she's going to lose her job. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She's sorry because now what's clicked into her head is she's going to lose her job. Hey, bud. Hey, bud. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. Hey, bud. Oh, now you want to call him Bud. Let's go on. Let's go on. Listen to the rest. Tiger, who lived on the third floor, parked on the fourth floor of the building that night. I just want to park on the third floor. 
could have sworn I parked on the third floor. How did she get in if this was not her place? The door was ajar, pimpin'. She headed to the apartment directly above her unit, thinking she's- Let's listen to the rest. Two shots hitting John once in the chest. I don't disagree with everything you are saying. We need to remember that the judge, who was black, threw out evidence. The jury made up a majority of minorities gave her the 10-year sentence. Oh, it's, it goes deeper than that. No. I... I... I'm so tired. I'm so tired. You were just sexting, boo. You were just sexting prior to coming to your place. Now you're so tired. Now all of a sudden she's tired. I'm so tired. I had a 14-hour shift. Oh, I was just I was just sexting a married man about how horny I was, but I'm tired. I'm so tired. Oh my god, I'm so tired. First things coming out of her mouth was about her job, was about her employment. Then slowly, slowly starts, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, hey bud, oh no, I'm so tired. This is who the victim's brother wanted to set free. Just let her walk. Now, she more worried about her job and getting her boy toy to text back to help her instead of saving a life of who you shouldn't have shot. Critical moment she could have saved him, yet she's racist. I won't go that far, Pimpin. But here's the thing. Throughout the entire tape, when do you hear her say she was in fear for her life? Lucas, great job highlighting this. She's set a president for black lives and what it's worth discussing how it's transpired. Hearing the tape, hearing the audio of the 911 call, where does she say, I was in fear for my life. I shot because of self-defense. Not once. The thing that stand out the very most to me was the fact that when I listened to that call, not one time did I hear Emma Geiger say that she was in fear of her life. Not once did she talk about in fear of her life. What was her defense though? What was her defense? He ran towards me, screaming, hey, 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 bam, that's why I shot. Turns out that was a lie, because he was next to the couch. Well, well, when they, when they cross-examined her, then she switched up her story. Well, uh, well, was it by the couch? It was by the couch. He wasn't, he wasn't by the door. Does that sound remorseful to you? The character that we've established of this officer, do you think she's credible in any regard? Do you think she is credible in any regard? Do you think she's as dependable? Do you think she's a dependable officer? Do you think she should have even had on that badge to begin with? It wasn't premeditated. Don't think she deserves 25. Nobody said anything about premeditated pimping. Do you think she should have been an officer to begin with? I'm just curious. I would say hell to the no. Hell to the no. But let's go on. Let's go on. She shot the man. Pow, pow, pow. Right? He's bleeding. He's bleeding out. He's bleeding out. Let's go on. Because she tried to perform CPR. That's, that's what they want us to believe. She performed CPR. You ready? Let's go. Let's check it out. We're going to get into this. We're going to bring it up. Hold up. Hold up. Just bear with me. Bear with me just for a little bit. She tried to perform CPR. Where is this? Hold on, because I brought this up. There was a whole article how she tried to perform CPR. There it is. There it is. You ready for the CPR? You ready for the CPR that she 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 tried to apply? Look at that. <laughs> Relax, she was a dummy. A dummy with the badge, Mike B. A dummy with the badge, Mikey B. A dummy with the badge, with training. An officer who killed an innocent man. 
Don't be soft on her now because you're not soft on the ignorance. When you see an ignorant, what do you say? Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And I'm right there with you. But we got to be consistent. We got to be consistent. Don't be soft on her now when she's a dummy. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. I won't allow that here. I won't allow that here. We have to be consistent here. Are you ready? Let's look at the CPR. Let's look at this. Some of you guys don't know the full story. Don't worry, I'm going to give it to you. Under questioning, Geiger said she did some CPR. Some CPR, but added that her training had been limited and that she had never tried it on a person before. Okay. Her training had been limited. How how has it been limited? She told the court that she was struggling to provide aid and talk on the phone to 911 dispatchers. Side note, she's 31. She almost looks 51 to me. Anyone that has done any real work in government knows the system will try its best to protect you so the system doesn't look bad. I want people to read this. I want people to read this. She told the court that she was struggling to provide aid and talk on the phone to 911 dispatchers. She was trying to provide CPR while on the phone. How effective do you think that CPR was? I'm just curious. How effective do you think that CPR was on the phone doing compressions? How effective do you think that CPR was? Now, here's the thing. This is a five-year vet. A five-year vet. Me, no, no police experience. What do you think I would have done if I'm talking to someone on the phone and I need to use both of my hands? What do you think you would have done if you were on the phone with someone but needed to use both of your hands? Speaker phone. Mm-hmm. Speaker phone. I'm not a genius. I don't know if any of you guys are geniuses. But speaker phone. Put the phone down. Put all your effort into the compressions. Put all your effort into saving this innocent man's life. She did some CPR. Let's continue. She admitted she stopped providing aid to text her partner for help twice. CPR, while on the phone, stopped, text one time, CPR, while on the phone, stopped, text it a second time, CPR, while on the phone, stopped, because the ambulance is here, the paramedics are here, stopped, and to guide arriving officers from the hallway into the apartment. How effective do you believe that CPR to be? Hmm? Now, shot the man in the chest. Bleeding. Bleeding out. Are you ready? Are you ready for this one? I don't think you guys are. She had gauze. She had gauze in the back. She had gauze in her back pocket. Let's look into this. Let's look into this. Five-year vet. Five-year vet. Let's look into this. You ready? Prosecutors also pointed out that Geiger did not make an adequate attempt to save Gene's life after shooting him, including failing to perform CPR on him and using her first aid kit. It didn't cross my mind, Geiger responded to the prosecutor, asking why she didn't use the gauze she had in her backpack lying next to her, lying next to her to stem Jean's bleeding wound. It didn't cross my mind. It didn't cross your mind to stop the bleeding? To stem to stem the bleeding wound? What's the first thing? What's What's the first thing you see in every drama, even on TV? We've got to stop the bleeding. We've got to stop the bleeding. This is a five-year veteran. I think they faked her toxicology and she was on meth. Won't go into that. 
It didn't cross my mind. It didn't cross my mind. How much, le what level of incompetence do you need? Hmm? What level of incompetence do you need? It didn't cross my mind. That's what she responded with. When it came to, why don't you use the gauze you had in your backpack lying next to you to send Jean's bleeding wound? It didn't cross my mind. I didn't even think of it. Five-year veteran. Let's go on because it gets better, people. It gets better. I know you guys are Lucas. What? I didn't know this. Oh, yes. It gets better. You ready? Get ready for this one. This one is delicious. Where is it? Where is this nonsense? Because what happens is, what happens, are you ready? Didn't cross her mind. Okay, that's fine. Didn't cross your mind. Let's go into this one. Here we go. There it is. All these ads, it's fine. Let's look into this. Didn't cross her mind. I want people to, I want that to, to God, dog. Come on. Are you serious? Oh boy. Didn't cross her mind. Let's see if we can refresh this. Block this. Ad lock. Can't do that. This is unreal. But here's what it says. I'll let you know what it says. Adcock also testified testified that chemical testing showed Geiger had no blood on her uniform. Blue latex gloves in her pocket also showed no signs of blood and appeared to be unused. She had no blood on her uniform. No blood on her uniform. Gloves unused. Okay? No blood on her uniform. Gloves unused. She's also shown also shown to be texting while on the phone. She's texting with bloody hands. That's what she's doing. That what, that's what you want me to believe? Okay. All right. Not looking into the case, I thought the murder charge would get tossed on appeal. I agreed the murder charge after 911 call and everything else. CPR training says stay with Vic till medic takes over. No blood on her uniform. None. No blood on the latex gloves. 15 minutes on the phone, then killed a the guy. Was she that enraged by 15 minute combo that she saw red, thought it was her home, and thought she shot Riviera? This is a trained officer, a five year vet, people. Five year vet. But let's go on. Let's go on to see how everything was handled. Are you ready? Let's go on to see how everything was handled. Let's see how remorseful this woman really was. Everybody's talking about remorse. Let's see the how, in that how, how she responded. Trial underway in Dallas. Just spinning down a long hallway and finding a distressed Amber Guy. That's always my heart. You got a little blood. I think that may be blood on her hands. Are you ready? I know it's my apartment. It's my apartment. Are you ready? But prosecutors are seemingly using other videos to suggest Geiger received preferential treatment from her colleagues. She's getting hugged. She's getting hugged like she's the victim. She's getting hugged like she's the victim. Let's continue to see how remorseful she is. At one point, this is this is her. That's Amber Geiger right there. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? To sit in a patrol car at times looking at her phone as Jean is rushed to the hospital. That is the man she killed in cold blood. Being rushed to the hospital. This man is grasping. Trying to cling to his life. Trying to cling to his life. 
they are taking him to the hospital. Where is she? Her little butt is by a squad car. The guy even opens the door for her and closes it. Allows her to sit down and text on her phone. That's his dead body. That's his body going past her. How remorseful do you think she is? Huh? How remorseful would you say this individual is? People talking about, well, she's, she's, she's sorry for what she did. She's a, how remorseful does it look like? She just killed an innocent man. And his body is going past her. And her butt is in the car texting. Her first words out of her mouth talking about, I'm going to lose my job. I'm done. Does that look like remorse to you? Some of y'all clowns. Yeah, I have righteous indignation. That's correct. Because there has been an injustice that has happened. And you're all talking about damn forgiveness. Great. Be, forgive her all you want. But justice still needs to be served. There is no remorse shown by that. None. Sitting in the car texting. Geiger's attorney says his dead body. She's texting on, she, on her phone after an almost 14 hour work day when she walked into what she. That's what you want me to believe is remorseful. You can miss me, player. You can miss me with that. Nothing about her has been remorseful except when she's on the stand. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. I did. Oh, she put on the big tears. She was crying then. She was crying like a, cr just crying and crying and crying. You couldn't turn off the, the waterworks. You couldn't turn them off. But her first thought was, I'm going to lose my job. I'm done. His dead body, his body clinging on to life. Clinging on to life. The man did nothing. Clinging on to life. His body's going past her. She's plopping her butt in the car. Didn't even look at it. I want you guys to look at, didn't even acknowledge his body. Didn't even acknowledge it. She's looking somewhere else, looking at the officer, plopped in on her phone. His body going past her. This is what you want to tell me? This is what remorse looks like? No, absolutely not. Absolutely freaking not. But let's continue, people. Let's continue because it gets better. Are you ready for this? I don't think you are. I don't think you are. Let's continue. Let's go on. You ready? Let's see how many other... Let's see if they do this to any other ignorance. Let's see how let's see how sympathetic they are to ignorance. Because this is what they did to her. Are you ready? In a closed hearing today, it was also revealed that the sergeant who put Geiger in the squad car told her to not say a word because the dash cam was running. Once the police union rep gets on the scene. He tells the sergeant to turn off the vehicle recorder so that nothing they say will be recorded. Neither of these luxuries, we won't even go into that, will be recorded. Are you ready? Are you ready? Further details of that night indicate that Geiger was removed from the police vehicle after the shooting and allowed counsel from other officers. Allowed counsel from other officers. Allowed counsel from other officers. She feels no remorse. Why can't people see what's going on here? Allowed counsel from other officers. Allowed to have your phone. Allowed to have your phone. They are, they are advising her. Because you see on the 911 said nothing about self-defense. After the advisory... I was in fear of my life. He was running towards me. 
Some of y'all comments are foolish. Lucas is passionate and should, and so, and should so I am because this could happen to you, especially if you dark skin. I won't even go into that. This is an abuse of power. This is corruption. This is what we are seeing. This is an officer versus a civilian, an innocent civilian. This could have been any one of us. Don't get confused. Don't get confused with the aesthetics, people. Don't get confused with the black and white. No, 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 no. You can go, go down that path if you want. This is an officer, a trained officer of five years, who has shown incompetence, negligence, and damn right just an, an indifference to a life she has taken. She has robbed. Officers counseling her. Officers guiding her what she should say. Don't say it because the dash cam is on. But let's get, let's get, let's go a little bit, let's keep going. Because this gets even better. This gets even better. I know many of you guys are wondering, how could it get better? How could it get better? Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Because you want to know something? Are you ready for this? Where is it? Oh, come on now. It gets better. Because you want to know what she did with that phone? You ready? You want to know what she did with that phone? Deleted messages. That's what she did with that phone. Deleted messages. What type of remorseful person deletes messages? Deleted, some of the messages sent were deleted after the shooting, prosecutor said. With her phone, she's deleting evidence. She's deleting evidence, but she's remorseful, right? She's remorseful. Oh my God, let me delete all the evidence, let me delete this. But they recovered it, and that's how we got the texts between her and her partner, who she was having an affair with. They both were deleting messages. Deleting messages. Some of them they couldn't even recover. Deleting messages. Judge Tammy Kemp eventually agreed they would be admitted for evidence. They had to force the judge to admit the deleted text messages as evidence. I want people to understand this. In the last 10 minutes of Bo's life, Amber Geiger made it a series of unreasonable errors. Super horny today, Geiger tested Riviera. Me too, Riviera texted back. If a cop can do that, then how can anyone, how, how can anyone can safe, can be safe? I get what you're saying. Super horny, horny today, me too. This is the same woman who was tired, remember? She was tired. Oh, I'm so tired. Deleting text messages. She was deleting evidence. Deleting evidence after she killed a man. And you clowns want to talk about how remorseful she was. No remorseful in her eyes. Those were crocodile tears, people. Those were crocodile tears. I had to force the judge to even get this evidence in. You mean the deleted text messages that she deleted after, after shooting an innocent man? What type of person deletes messages? Since it's an accident, right? It's an accident. Why would you delete evidence? Why would you delete text messages? This says be amazing, not be stupid. This says be amazing, not be a clown. This says be amazing, not be a fool. This says be amazing, not be naive. This says be amazing, not be simple-minded. This is the person that the victim's brother wanted to set free. This is the type of person that you guys are clowning about. Oh, she's remorseful. Don't get into the black and white versus stuff. That's what some want, they want. We're not saying anything about black and white. 
Yo, block that fool. I'm, I, I've already told you, and this isn't about a black or white. I already told you that. I said that early on. Thank you for the super chat, but you, you're blocked. It's that simple. I told you not to mention any of that nonsense here. It's not about race baiting. This is bigger than that. You guys aren't, you guys aren't getting this. This is bigger than that. Well, it's a woman and it's a man. And this is bigger than that. This is an incompetent person with a badge that the system try to protect, that federal officers try to protect, that the judge tried to protect. Keep going. I see where you're going. Facts and evidence. That's what it all boils down. Moderators, if anyone's in the chat, please block the person who left that $10 super chat. It's not about money. It's not about followers. It's about truth. So I appreciate that. Um, but no. Not about that. Let's continue. Let's continue. This is the woman deleting text messages. Nonsense. Nonsense. This is the type of woman you guys want. Are you ready for this one? People talking about, well, well it's manslaughter. Regardless of manslaughter or not. You ready? Let's, let's continue on. When you aimed and pulled the trigger at Mr. James, shooting him in the center mass where you are trained, you intended to kill Gene. God dog it. I can't stand you guys. I really can't stand. Who is this? D Dallas News? Dallas News, you guys are a bunch of clowns for this. <laughs> you guys are a bunch of clowns for this nonsense. But what she said, she said, yes, I did. She intended to kill the man. That's what it is. That's what happened. I want people to understand this. Stop with this foolishness. Stop with this foolishness. Deleting text messages. This is the person, this is the person that her brother wanted to walk free. All for forgiveness. I'm all for forgiveness. There is no forgiveness shown here. There is no forgiveness shown here. None. She doesn't even forgive, she doesn't even forgive herself for what she did. There is no remorse. None has nothing to do about forgiveness. I am sick and tired of people talking about forgiveness and mercy and grace. You can do both. You can be, you can have forgiveness, mercy and grace and want justice. There is no justice served here. Let's go into what the jury said. Let's go into what the jury said. You ready? Because it gets better, people. It gets better. That ABC News exclusive, the brother of the man who was killed when a Dallas police officer walked into his ever had was nice and a lot of teeth. Now, let's remember the jury. Let's remember the jury, right? Because there were people who had the belief that she didn't get a fair trial because there were black people on, on the jury. There were too many black people on the jury. We need to be aware of this and see it in bigger view. People often overlook this. There were people who believed because there were too many black and brown people on the jury, she didn't get a fair trial. But what they failed to take into account are the demographics of where she was. What they failed to take into account is the jury selection process. But okay, but those same people want to say that 10 years is acceptable. You mean the jury who convicted her of murder you said that was unfair because there were too many black and brown people. But when they gave her 10 years, that's okay. Not about race, sex, money. This is about truth. Amazing. That's exactly what it's about. Truth. Miss me with this left and right. This is about an injustice. You want to know why it's worse? You want to know why it's worse? It's worse because I said that had nothing to do with it. That had nothing to do with black and brown. 
Because guess what? Black and brown people, they can, they can believe one plus one is two. Black and brown people can believe that, hey, if I see facts and evidence, this is what it leads to. With the facts and evidence presented, they charge her with murder. You wonder what makes that charge so ridiculous? It's not the charge, it's the sentencing. With charge, by charging someone with murder, you're now going to give them 10 years? You might as well just, just let her walk free then, if that's the case. You might as well just let her walk free. Lucas, do you believe voluntary manslaughter should have been a higher sentencing for the murder of an innocent man? Thanks for uh, not making this about race. Listen, to what it matters with is what they charged her with. I don't know whether you want to say it could have been involuntary manslaughter. Does it is what it is? They charge it. Let's not deal with what woulda, coulda, shoulda. Let's deal with facts and evidence. The fact is, they charged her with murder, murder, not manslaughter, murder. With that charge of murder, they then gave her ten years. What is the point of charging her with murder if you're giving her ten years? I would have rather manslaughter if that's the case. I would have rather manslaughter because the judge was trying everything in her, everything in her power to give this woman a lesser sentencing, allowed castle doctrine, allowed a, a, a crime of passion. Nonsense. That is nonsense. Police officers lying on stage talking about how she's dependable. Officers, even when she shot the person trying to cover for her. Don't, here, let us counsel you. Let us counsel you. Don't, don't say anything because the dash cam is there. Let's turn off the dash cam. They tried everything in their power to shield this corrupt and incompetent officer. Let's hear what the jury has to say. I think that was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. This morning, two of the jurors who found former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger guilty of murdering both of John are speaking out. There's no way we can ever know what he would want. But what he would want is justice, you dumb, you very unintelligent man. I'm trying to hold myself because the ignorant wants to come out. The ignorant is itching to come out. We would have never known what he wanted. He would have wanted justice. That's what he would have wanted. But I think we all had to make a decision that we could live with and that our conscience could be sound with the diverse jury made up of eight that we could live with and our conscience could be sound with what about the man who's dead though you talking about yourself you talking about this is all about you well i had to make a choice that i could live with this isn't about you this is about an innocent man who was killed who was murdered and you talking about yourself well i had to make a choice that i could live with clowns women and four men, all of varying ethnicity, clown, sentenced Amber Geiger to 10 years behind bars. These jurors telling us the decision was not an easy one. There was a lot of crying. A lot of crying over what, fool? What are you crying over? A lot of crying. A lot of crying. A lot of crying. What, they crying over sentencing her? They're crying more over sentencing her than they are about the man who was killed. About the innocent man who was killed eating ice cream on his couch, people. When we were told to go decide between five and life, that was like, we didn't have words. Prosecutors were asking for 28 years. Prosecutors were asking for 28 years. Everyone on this man's side was trying to get justice for him. 28 years. That's what the prosecutors was asking for. And his own brother didn't even want that. His own brother wanted her to walk free. Do not conflate foolishness with forgiveness. Those are not the same. Yes, they were. Um, you all landed at 10. After hearing about how his family talked about him? After hearing how his family talked about him. Remember that five of those 10 years are eligible for parole too. So she might serve just five years in the end of uh, uh, and in the end, such injustice. This whole thing sounds like an insurance scam that went sideways. He seemed like just the light in their lives, and he was kind. And he seemed like the light in their lives, and so as a justice, it, to that to you, that means give him ten years. Just caring and forgiving, and I, I said, I told everyone, I was like, 
I'm really having a hard time with this because we all agree that it was a mistake, and I don't think I, th I don't think Bo would want to take harsh vengeance. I think he. Would what is harsh vengeance? This isn't vengeance. This is justice. That was your job. You had one damn job, and that was to serve justice for this innocent man's life, who was taken from him. The fact that you want to say that he was a light to their family should have been more more incentive. To give this man justice. He would want to forgive her. And there we go with forgiveness. You can forgive at the same time require justice to be served. You can forgive someone who has wronged you. What about atonement? What about atonement, people? What about atonement for your behavior, for your actions? When your child does something wrong, do you not forgive them? But at the same time, hey. No TV for you. Hey, you don't get to go out tonight. Hey, turn off the video game. You're grounded. Does, does not the, shouldn't the punishment match the crime? Shouldn't the punishment match the crime? And I felt, I didn't feel like I had any right to speak for him. You, that you, that is your job to speak for him. Your job is to apply justice for this man's life. That is your one and only job. Life for life, an innocent life. That is your only job. And you failed. You failed. And he isn't there to talk for himself, but. Why do you think that is? And he isn't there to talk for himself because he was murdered. That's why, stupid. That's why. Talk about he's not there to talk for himself. Exactly the damn point. Listening to how people talked about him. Why people not understanding that this innocent human being is now dead, took from people who needed him, who care. There's still consequences. I felt like he would forgive her. He would for If he was still alive, he would forgive her. But he's not. That is the point. If he was still alive, what would he forgive her for? He wouldn't be dead. For 28 years, and I'm going to be honest and, and true, I was like... I can't give her She's the one that upsets me the most. She's the one that upsets me the most. It has nothing to do with the color of her skin, but listen to how she talks. 28 years. I know a lot of people are not happy about the 10 years, but I feel like, you know, for this case was not like any other case. You can't compare this case to any of those other officers killing unarmed black men. Those officers that kill unarmed black men, when they got out, they went back to living their lives. Amber well, this is what she said. When they got out, they, they went back to living their lives. Geiger, ever since she killed that man, she has not been the same. Look at how they have this victim complex on the murderer. Ever since she got out, she has not been the same. Says who? Robert Jordan IQ test 125 denied to be a cop to high IQ 104 or below. By the way, give these incompetent jurors and the bail of 10 years as well. She showed remorse and- There we- She showed remorse! She showed remorse during the sentencing, stupid! Of course you're gonna show remorse! If you have an IQ or intellectual bandwidth higher than that of a net, of course you're gonna show remorse! Unless you just don't give a dang! Of course she's gonna show remorse during the sentencing! Of course she's gonna turn on the waterworks! You about to- You may get life, boo! Five to life was the range they had! Five to life. The prosecutors requested 28. This clown Negro talking about she showed remorse. And that she's going to have to deal with that for the rest of her life. Who is going to have to deal with this for the rest of her life? You want to know who's also going to have to deal with this for the rest of her life? The family. The mother. The father. The brother. The friends. The relative. His lover. They are so focused on this Damn Amber Geiger that they have left everything go to the wind. Wasn't there even one jury with the backbone to stand up and talk sense into these fools? They talking about she has to live with this the rest of her life. Guess who doesn't get a life, pimpin'? Guess whose life was snuffed? 26-year-old man. 26-year-old black man. I know some of you guys don't like me saying black man, but that's what he was. He wasn't an ignorant. You guys want to talk about black and black crime. He was not doing any of that. This man was a, he was, he was doing the best he could. 
the best he could. And his life was taken from him. And they are talking about this, this monster, Amber Geiger. This monster of a person who was wearing a badge, who should, who was dis disrespected the badge. They talking about her like she's a victim. Like she has to live with this for the rest of her life. Can, can I? I'm, I'm sickened. I am sickened by this. This is sickening. This is sick. Why do we even need enemies if we have clown Negroes like this? We don't even need the Klan anymore. People want to talk about white supremacy, mother this, and no, 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 we don't need any of that. We have clowns like this. Clowns like this. These two clowns, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, having more sympathy for Amber Geiger than the innocence she took from this. She robbed an innocent man of his life. She robbed the world of a potentially great man. Robbed the world of a potentially great man. And these clowns talking about she has to live with this for the rest of her life. That's why we gave her 28, why we gave her 10 years. Bruh, enough is enough. Enough is enough. And anyone who finds this acceptable foolishness, shame on you. Shame on you. There is nothing acceptable about this. This is nonsense. This is a grave injustice. They have set a president for foolishness. This is an officer, a veteran officer, from start to finish has shown incompetence and negligence and just complete indifference for a loss of life that she, that she took, she robbed, she stole from this family and from this world. You've given great insight into this case than any media outlet keep being amazing. This is not about right or left. This is about truth. This is about justice, people. And justice has not been served. Miss me with this forgiveness crap. Forgive her all you want. I'm glad the brother forgave her. Saying that she should walk away is foolishness. And that clearly had an impact on these jurors. She's so, so called remorse because it was about her going to jail. Exactly. She turned on the waterworks when she was on stand. Even though she lied, lied under oath. Lied under oath, but she was crying. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't mean to. What was those tears when she was in the cop car as his dead body was walking by? As his body was grasping for life. Trying to hang on to any life he had. The last inch, last ounce of life. She's in the, she's in the cop car texting. Where were all these tears? Where are all these tears on the phone when she's talking about I'm going to lose my job, I'm done. Where was this remorse then? Where was the remorse then? People hugging her like she's the victim. They talking about her like she's the victim. Nah, you can miss me with this nonsense. You can miss me with this nonsense. Can't believe you guys. I can't believe the clowns. Got wolves and snakes all around me. Wolves and snakes all around me. Want to turn a blind eye to injustice because it doesn't fit their narrative. Because it doesn't fit their branding and marketing. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself. Wolves and snakes all around me. Because they're looking for followers. Because they're looking for that next talking gig. Because they're looking for that next radio show. For the, because they're looking for that next spotlight. Their next high. Turning a blind eye to injustice. That is as blatant as the sun in the sky. As the moon during night. Shameful. Absolutely shameful. I'm done. That's all I have to say on this. That's all I have to say on this. This is an officer. An officer. Key witnesses gunned down in Dallas. Absolutely. Just announced that. Had clowns talking about, is this a conspiracy theory? I just reported he was gunned down. That's all. 
If you want to jump to conclusions, that's on you. This is an officer with the badge. Training. Five-year vet. Ten years. That's how much an innocent man's life is. And I know I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. A black man. I know. Ooh, Lucas, don't bring race into this. I'm not. But we have to juxtapose things, don't we? A black ignorant versus a black man. Isn't that what I say all the time? Ignorance come in all shapes and colors and sizes of the rainbow. White ignorant, black ignorant, Hispanic ignorant, Asian ignorant. Well, we have a black ignorant versus a black man. A black man's life who was doing nothing. No, no history. No history. He wasn't in the middle of selling cigarettes on the street. He wasn't in the middle of a traffic stop telling the officer, I have a weapon on me, officer. It's a legal license. He wasn't in Taco Bell asleep. No. He was in his home eating ice cream, watching TV. No criminal record. College educated. Smart, bright young man. Murdered in his own home. Ten years. Ten years. You guys call that justice. No justice. Nothing. Nothing. That is not just. That is a smack in every citizen's face. Every, every American, red-blooded American should be heated. This is a call for just justice. That's what this is a call for. This is a call for change. Because no change has happened. Nothing. Law is still the same. No change has happened. This is disgraceful. This is disgraceful. And for everyone who's trying to minimize this story of injustice, to spin it about a story of forgiveness, you guys are clowns. You guys are missing the point. You brought the truth out tonight, Lucas. She played everyone and most fell for it, even, even me. This is a real injustice that needs rectifying. You're above the law if you're pretty. Don't agree with that. But I want people to understand what truly happened here. Amber Geiger was not remorseful. There was nothing remorseful about Amber Geiger. There was nothing competent about Amber Geiger. There was nothing dependable as the sergeant who lied under oath said. Nothing. This woman should have even, this woman should not even have gone to the academy. Much less had a badge on her. Much less should have been policing. And look. And look at what happened. Look at the other officers. Look at how even the sergeant who said she failed to immediately report her incompetence. He even defended her on the stand. Defended her. Telling, saying that she was dependable and a hardworking officer. Even though, even though she was the main one who let the handcuffed prisoner escape custody. And then was a little iffy about coming with the full details. He, even he stood up for her. Other officers protecting her. Don't tell me there is not corruption. As long as there is one crooked officer, we have a problem. As long as there is one crooked officer, we have a damn problem. As an American citizen, we all, this is, this is a big issue. This is not a black or white, this is an American citizen issue. Don't, don't, do not conflate a badge with a hero. Do not conflate a sentence with justice. They are not the same, people. They are not the same. Disgusting. Disgusting display. Disgusting display. Disgusting display that they have somehow aligned this narrative with forgiveness instead of highlighting the injustice that was blatant. Disgusting. I want people to understand that. Disgusting. Has nothing to do with that. Those are my thoughts on the Amber Geiger trial. So don't misquote me. Don't take me out of context. Don't spread some nonsense on social media or YouTube or anything. Because you heard it here. You heard it from the horse's mouth. What I feel about this trial. I'm done. 
I'm done. Y'all have a good night.